question for you. Did you think that I painted this chair like that? Well, I have a secret for you. I didn't. Nope. What is it? You don't know? Well, I'll let you in on what I did. I decoupage fabric onto this rocking chair. That's why it matches Rough Rocker. I had just enough fabric that it covered the chair, the slats, the top slats, and the bottom slats. And I'm going to share with you how I did it. And decoupage is nothing more than a fancy word for gluing. And I glued the fabric to this chair using Mod Podge. And I've used a glossy finish, but you can use whatever finish you like. This is what I had on hand. You can find Mod Podge at Home Depot, at Joanne Fabrics, any crafty store. You can find Mod Podge, probably online too. All right. You can use satin, matte, whatever your preference is. Again, I just used what I had. And I also knew that I was going to sand it lightly when I was finished because Mod Podge dries a little tacky feeling. And I didn't want that on this chair. So I just lightly sanded it and sprayed it with a clear polyurethane. And this will protect it from the weather because it's outside and also wear. Okay, and spray was really easy on the slats. On bigger projects, I will brush on a polyurethane, but spraying made sense here. And again, I chose satin finish, but you can choose what you like. And I typically use satin because I like a little bit of a sheen. And when you use glossy, which I love glossy, but you have to have a perfect surface for glossy. Otherwise, it'll show every little bump every little scratch, dent, anything in it, any imperfection. So um, clear polyurethane is in satin is the best way to go. Okay. And then you're also going to need a really nice brush. You'll see people using um, foam brushes, but I don't. And the reason being is that when you apply the decoupage material, or the Mod Podge in this case, because you could use a clear coat, is that I found that the, the sponge kind of starts pulling apart and it leaves little bits and traces of sponge on the material and then it gets in the um, finish and it's just, it doesn't feel good, it's rough, it doesn't look good, so a brush is what I recommend. And then I have a cup, it's a painter's cup here, that I put the Mod Podge in and it stores your brush. Um, I mentioned light sanding after you're finished if you want to apply another finish. You can also sand in between the layers. I didn't. I'm kind of a hack that way. Unless I saw something that really was too rough or um, there, around the edges there were a little bit of drips. I did sand those off and scrape them off. So um, you also want a tack cloth to remove any of that dust. Okay, This works a lot better than using a damp cloth. This is a little tacky though, you may want to wear gloves. It's, I don't like washing my hands afterwards. So there you have it, the tools and the materials that you need for this project. And if you're ready, I'm ready to share with you how I did it. Okay, so what I'm doing here is starting to match up the pattern. So you don't want it just stuck on there like this. That doesn't make any sense. So I've cut the strips in advance for the width that I wanted. And now I'm just kind of working these in. It's just like matching wallpaper. If you've ever done any wallpapering, you want to make sure you have the repeat. And I've laid these out ahead of time and numbered them just in case they get mixed up. Okay, so I'm just going to play with this for a few minutes. All right, and I want to make sure that I have plenty of fabric. I've cut these longer than I needed to, and it looks like I'm going to be fine on these other pieces because I don't want that salvage edge to show at all. Okay. So I'm just going to keep doing that and I'm getting, I'm getting ready for the next step and I can start applying these strips of fabric. Okay, I don't want too many strips of fabric on here at one time. 
because this is going to get a little messy now. So what I'm doing here is I'm looking underneath the chair and drawing a line across where I want to cut the fabric. Can you see that line right here? Okay. Let's see here. I've already marked a couple of these fabric strips. But I'm going to start by cutting this one right here because you can see our pattern lines up. So I'm ready to cut. And just snip this. All right. Now I don't have this perfectly square, but I'm not too concerned about that right now because this piece for me is going to be a little bit rustic. Actually, not a little bit. All right, so I've snipped off a piece of fabric here, and then I'm going to check to make sure the length is where I want it over here. I will be back in a minute with my products. Actually, All right, so I've got my Mod Podge all ready to go. I have it in a container and I've got a little brush here. And I'm ready to start applying this fabric. So, get a little bit of Mod Podge. And I've got this pattern all laid out, so I'm going to do this a little carefully here at first. And I've got a piece laying next to it so that I can match this up. But first, apply a generous coat of Mod Podge to my chair. I'm going to go over the end a little bit here. And then I'm going to apply my fabric strip if I can get a hold of it. All right. And matching that up because I have this cut. And I have this going over the edge just a little bit back here to get me started. Okay. I have some Mod Podge oozing, oozing out. It's okay. Right. So now that we've got that under there, I'm going to put some on top. Just get it on there nice because this is what's going to glue the fabric to the rocking chair. Keep on working that Mod Podge in. You want to make sure that you get your fabric all covered and it's laying down. I also have a utility knife here and I use this utility knife to trim the fabric after it had dried and I found that this worked really well. I tried snipping it with scissors. Oh, that's something you need, scissors. And it just wasn't working out very well, so I allowed the Mod Podge to dry and the fabric to become rigid. And then I just took this blade alongside the slat very gently and slowly, and it trimmed it off beautifully. So I've got my fabric up already. I'm going to place it down and match it up. That is not a match. So I need to flip this strip over until I can match it up. All right, I'm going to be meticulous here just because I like patterns to match. I think that shows a sign of quality and care. All right, so get this all pressed down. Checking this one too to make sure. I should look for air bubbles. And I'm using a brush instead of a sponge because of the material. Some materials you have to be a little careful with because they will pill. And I'm just applying a little pressure here with the brush. Make sure I get this stuck down there nice and tight. 
every little bit covered. Don't worry about it at this point, about every little square inch. Well, I guess every eighth of an inch because we're gonna go I did five layers, layers, believe it or not. Right now we're just getting the fabric tacked. Pretty easy, right? Maybe a little messy, maybe a little time consuming, but the results are well worth it, aren't they? All right, so have I inspired you? Are you ready to create your own piece of furniture? If you go out and decoupage a piece of furniture, even paint it, whatever it might be, share it with me, please. Post it on my Facebook page and tag me. I want to ooh and ah over your creation. I want to see what you're doing, what your ideas are, what you think is beautiful or fun or quirky or what your style is, all right? So remember, share your pieces of furniture here because I want to see them. I want everybody to see them. And I will see you in the next video.